Hello, hello, everybody. You know what time it is? It's time for another Incarnate live stream. Yes, I'm excited. You know what we're doing today? Clipping masks. Hey, Seraphim, good day to you. Welcome. Hey, Cheryl is here. Yeah, all right. We're getting started. Clipping masks, everybody. Welcome, Your Majesty, King Clown. Hello. Like I said, we're going to be doing clipping masks today, okay? And first, I'm going to explain where they are, where to find them. Then I'm going to show you how they work. And then we're going to do some use cases, some fun use cases. I got about several. Cheryl helped brainstorm with me. And so we got a couple use cases for clipping masks. So I'm really excited about that. Fun stuff. Okay. All right. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's just jump right in, okay? So first, we got to figure out where to find them. So whenever you're working on a map, it doesn't matter what style it is. I believe clipping masks should be available in all styles, so it doesn't really matter. So just pick your style, your aspect ratio, and your editing resolution. And we're just going right into the catalog, and we're going to tell you where to find these clipping masks. Okay, so looking for clipping masks is not complex. You're going to want to hit that O key, send you to the object tool, and to open up the catalog, either click this or click the F key and open up the catalog, right? Okay, so there are a couple ways that you can find stuff in the catalog. First, you gotta know where it is in the pack structure. It's at the bottom. If you just click clipping masks, there they are right there, okay? Now, the other way that you can find them is just by going into that search field and type in clip or clipping masks, and you'll see they're right there. Now, there are two kinds. There's one with a hard edge and a soft edge, and we'll explain how that works on the canvas. So now that you know where to find it, Let's explain how it works, okay? Now the default layer, that's FG and BG layers. That's right here. You're gonna see that there's an add mode and a subtract mode. The add mode is gonna be the FG layer. Subtract mode is gonna be the BG layer, okay? Now a clipping mask is a stamp that picks up whatever's on the FG layer. So let me put one clipping mask down and you'll notice that is picking up the texture from the FG layer. Here, let me just show you real quick. If I went ahead and just put it in the add mode and did a drag across like that, you'll notice that there is, this is the add mode of the mask tool and the clipping mask is picking up whatever texture is on that FG layer, okay? That's basically what the clipping mask is, okay? It's basically just gonna pick up whatever is on the FG layer. FG layer, and that means that if I use, a, let's say, a color texture, or a color, so I'm not a texture, a color, like if I use this pink color right here, and I was to paint, uh, oopsie, that's the BG, my mistake, undo that, oopsie. So I paint the FG, this pink color right here, and you'll notice that the, pick, the clipping mask picks that up. Obviously, I didn't paint it over here, so it remains whatever color or texture that I painted over here on this part, okay? So always factor that in. So that's basically how a clipping mask works. There's also a soft edge. Let me show you real quick that as well. One second, you've seen the hard edge. Let's go back in and get a soft edge and you'll see the difference. You'll see that the edge has kind of a halo, kind of a little bit of soft edges like that. And that's great for certain use cases. We'll go over that, but those are the differences. That hard edge, this one right here, oopsie, and the hot and the soft edge, this one, okay? So that is what clipping masks are. Now, your question you might ask is, what is a clipping mask for? Like, what do you do with it, right? That can be kind of confusing. Well, there's tons of use cases that you can do. There's quite a bit, actually. So let's just go ahead and subtract and just remove all this. I'm just going to use this, and we're going to talk about the many use cases for it. Now, the general idea behind the use cases, subtract, uh-oh, what is going on here? Might have to refresh the page, sorry about that. For some reason, I'm undoing. Let's just refresh. Yes, it's going to cover everything. Exodiac, I don't know, exodiac? I can't, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce it properly, but yes, it will cover anything depending on it's a layer above it. So I'm also going to explain that it's an object, okay? That means it can go over other objects as well as both the BG layer and objects. So let me just go back in, choose styles. Sorry about that. Not sure what happened there. 
Whenever you encounter something strange like the, the screen freezes or something like that, save your map. If it freezes, obviously, you won't be able to save, so do a back one, a, uh, a backup. Because sometimes this happens, it's a web tool. But there's a save offline backup right here. And of course, if you can save, save your map and just refresh the page. And that's it. And if the issue persists, I would move forward and clear your internet cache refresh the page, maybe restart the browser, and it should go back. That's just the issue with using a web web uh, using a web tool, okay? Let's go back into Clipping Mask. Remember how to find them. You go into the catalog and just type in Clip or Clipping Mask, whatever you want, and you put the Clipping Mask down, and you'll see that it's on this layer, right? Now, what's really great about Clipping Mask is they can also cover up stamps, not just the BG layer, right? And that's kind of cool, right? So let me just show you that real quick, and then we'll go through those use cases. So I have a tree that I'm putting down right here, and let me see, hmm, what's going on with my mouse here? There we go. And if I take this clipping mask and I take it up a layer, I can hide it. So this is the main function of clipping masks. They're really meant to hide things, you know, but there's lots of use cases when it comes to hiding, but that is the general purpose or function of a clipping mask. It's to hide a stamp, hide a BG, uh, whatever it is you want to use it for. That's up to you, okay? So now I've written down a couple a, a couple of these use cases for them, and I've even incorporated some of them into some of the image guides that I have on my uh, profile on our site. So go check that out. I think it's called How to Create Bridges. So we'll start with that first, okay? Is there, is there a future plan? Sorry, let me answer this question. Are, ask the question, are there future plans to make a downloadable version of the program to avoid some of the web issues? Uh, you know, it, right now it's on the back burner and we've talked about it, but right now it's not uh, being worked on right now. We're working on other things. But that generally means that we'll just come back to it later. So it's kind of up in the air, but I think that would be cool and maybe I can discuss that. We can all discuss that as a team, okay? So use cases. The first one that I mentioned was making a bridge. Now, one thing you'll notice, I'm going to go back real quick and I'll show you a map that I made and using a previous stream where I think there was a waterfall. Here it is right here. So there's a waterfall stream that I use and you want to make a bridge. Now there's some things, some troubles that you come across when you're trying to make a bridge across a river, especially if you have cliff stamps or some kind of stamp lining the edge of your shores like you'll notice right here that there is some um there are these cliffs right here that are lining the river right and so if you were making a bridge if you were making one out of stamps you would have this problem of seeing a stamp underneath right and you don't want that right so what you would have to do is you could always use a clipping mask right and whenever you're making stuff like bridges and stuff i generally like to make it off to the side first and we're going to go first, we're going to just make a real quick bridge out of some simple stuff. I'm going to make, just take two walls, basically, put them side by side, and we're going to make a bridge. And it's not complex. It's super easy to make, by the way. So let's go ahead and do that first. So let's just say at 100%, I'm going to piece two of them together to have a bridge going across. It looks like it's going to take a couple of them. So I'll go like this. And I'm not going to worry about making anything fancy. I'm not worried about making a fancy bridge. I just want to show you one use case of applying that. Okay, so let's do this. Let's put these two together. I'm gonna to first turn off the sh shadow layer. I'm gonna group it so I have a nice wall, and that way when I select it, it's not, I don't have to select both of them, right? I only have to select one of them. And I have to take a look at that length. It doesn't look like it's long enough, so I can just go right in, open in that path, or open up that group, and just increase the length and go like this, okay? And then just copy and paste that. And then right there, you'll have your bridge. Now you see the problem right here already is that let's say that you wanted to fill this in with the add mode of the mask tool. That's one way you could totally build this bridge. You could just do that. So let me just do that real quick and I'll show you what that looks like when I do that. One moment here. So I let's say I go ahead and I add this right here, right? But the problem still persists that there are these cliffs right? Those cliffs shouldn't be there. You can even see the waves underneath as well, right? And so that's problematic. That's getting in the way. A clipping mask is a great thing to use to fill in that bridge. Okay, so let's just select 
uh, let's just select the bridge part. I've grouped them together like this. I'm just going to put it like this. And then I'm going to open it up and then go and just pick those clipping masks. Okay, so I open it up and I just type in clip like before. Here are the clipping masks. I recommend the hard edge. You don't need soft edges here. And you can just paste them together like this. It's kind of hard to see because I'm using the same texture, but let me just piece a couple of these together like this. And we'll edit them. We'll edit it more because I know that the, uh, the sides are off. I recognize that. I'll be sure to fix that, okay? Just in case. So I'm gonna rotate it now and put it across and you'll see that you don't see the waves, you don't see the cliffs, you don't see anything, right? And then from there, you can create a nice flow of road going across. So you can just take like a, some kind of cobble stone texture. You can use this, this one if you want and just go with the FG layer and just go right across like this. And you have this nice, easy bridge going across with a road. I don't recommend that same thickness, but you get the general idea. You know, you have this nice bridge and you, you have a continuity in the same material. So that same cobblestone that's on the road is the same material on the bridge. If you want a different material, you can absolutely do that. You can take uh, this texture right here. And of course, you're going to want to rotate it to match up with those walls there. And so let's say you just want a different material for the bridge. There you go. It's really as easy as that. Clipping masks are extremely helpful. And so that first one is a bridge. It's the easiest one to do. It's easy to put together and it's not complex. And of course you should definitely group it. Once you've put it all together, group it. And then of course, label it. You know, bridge is obviously what you would call it. And what's really nice about the bridge as a stamp is that you can move it wherever you want now. If you want, you can move the bridge. You can move this bridge to other parts of the, oh smokes, I can't even select it because there's too much going on. I'm gonna unselect, click this, only select groups. See, now you can move this to anywhere you want on the river too, anywhere that you want. If you want two bridges or you wanna connect the two bridges, you wanna make a, like an island, so it's really helpful. So that's that first use case, and I, this is the one that I use the most, okay? So now we're gonna go through some other ones. Another one, this is a little bit more complex, might be a little more time consuming, but I can tell you that it has great results, and we're gonna go into a different style. We're gonna go into, uh, we just did fantasy battle map, so let's use an example in a different style, and we'll move on to a different one. So this first one is, is fan, the second one is fantasy battle maps. We're gonna open that up, and I'm gonna show you how to make these kind of like platforms or tiers. You know, sometimes when there's a city and you're making something with the fantasy regional style and you just can't get the height, the sense of depth, the height that you're looking for, that includes cliffs. Clipping masks can come in handy when doing that. So first, let me just go into the catalog real quick and I'm gonna pull out some walls. I'm gonna show you a cool trick and I'm not gonna make a very complex platform. I'm just gonna make a very simple one and then give you the general idea on how it works. So that way, when you're making future ones, you'll know how it works. So I'm just gonna make a very simple isometric kind of um, platform. We're gonna take these walls, we're gonna go like this, put in another one. I don't want it to be too big. In fact, this is a little too big. We can go with something smaller. Let's just go with across this wide and that's it. And I'll put some, probably some pillars in between. So copy paste, put this one here. Oops, you don't want me to do that. I'm just gonna copy and paste, put these together like this. Okay, so we have it together like that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take a pillar and fill in that those corners real quick. This will make them small too. I don't want it to be massive. I think that should be just fine. Just kind of connecting them and bringing them together. Maybe this one needs to be a little bigger. I'm not sure, we'll have to check. Uh, yeah, we'll make it a little bigger. We'll do this. Thanks for bearing with me here. All right, we're piecing these together. Okay, and you don't have to put these these corner pieces together, but I'm just putting in there for fun. Okay, so now you've created this. So the trick is now is to put clip. You want to make a platform, right? So you can see the back side of the walls. So it just looks like there's walls, right? It doesn't look like a platform. Well, what are clipping masks for? Hiding stuff. Now, the first thing that you'll want to do is you're probably going to want to have the walls that are in the foreground, group them and put them a layer, a couple layers above. Then take these back walls, 
group them and put them in a layer uh, below, okay? So you have two, two sections, right? This is where, how you're gonna make your platforms. Whenever you make a platform, make the walls in the front group, may put them a layer above, obviously, because you want them to be covering the walls in the back, right? Once you've done that, and you should label them, you can label uh, front and back if you want, that's up to you. Um, so then once you've done that, now you can go into clipping masks, right? So we'll go back in here. We're gonna type in clipping masks. And the objective is to kind of hide this wall. And you're gonna to wanna to use a hard edge, obviously, right? So first let's put that clipping mask down and figure out where the layer it is. And so you want the clipping mask to hide behind this wall, but stay in front of this wall, okay? That's why we've put this front one a couple layers up and this one a couple layers back so that there's room for clipping masks to go in, right? So there's a couple shapes that you can go with. And I'm just gonna use this shape right here because this one uh, should fit into the corners and then go elsewhere. So let's first start with that. Let's put one there like this. Let's put one over here like this. And where I'm putting it is I'm gonna say that there's a little bit of a lip, a little bit of a lip, okay? And then I'm gonna take this one. I think this one should work. Let me check, uh, it doesn't look like it, but we can do it to this one, I think. And then we'll add in the square ones. Okay, now we can add in the square ones, or maybe this one might work. Let me just check. Copy, paste. I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. That's okay. That is okay. We'll just use this large one right here, and we're going to resize it to where it goes all the way across. Nice and big. Oh, and we don't want it to go above, go too far, right? You notice that? So be careful with that. Copy, paste. We'll put another one in just like this and the last one can go in or last couple probably it can go in like this just go keep that same edge trying to hide it we'll make sure you line them up right this is a little time consuming but i guarantee you this will absolutely make a huge difference in your maps when it comes to the kind of the height problem that you kind of encounter with fantasy regional because you notice the cliffs and stuff and it just seems kind of flat sometimes not saying that Flat isn't bad, but you know, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit more than just that. So let's go ahead and add in this one here. I just gotta make sure you hide all that stuff. Make sure it lines up, right? Okay, now once you've done all that stuff, now you can go ahead and select them both and then group. Okay, now that, since there's a clipping mask there, now you can go into your texture, whatever you want. Uh, I would pick a texture that kind of matches the same wall or around the same color scheme, but we're going to use like a concrete or a pavement texture and I'm going to go make sure it's set to FG, okay, and then I just go it all the way across like this. So no matter where I put it, it's going to be like this. Okay, now you'll see that there is a nice platform there and it can be any shape and you can put whatever you want on top of it. So it's gonna be like a tier. So there can be some staircases leading up to this tier. Make a two-story or two-wall high platform behind it. And then it also has a staircase going up to it. So these various tiers can really help to kind of make a very, um, a bit, lots of depth. So I'll put a couple together just to show you what I'm talking about. I can push one up like this, put one right here if I wanna put another layer there like this, maybe put one in the corner like this if I want. So there's another one there. I can put another one like right here if I want. Hold on a second, let me just copy and paste. I can put another one right here like this. And so you start having like these multiple tiers and you can work with these tiers to make some pretty interesting stuff. So right just with, just with these two tiers, with just one tier alone, we're able to make a series of of kind of like these tier like things that you can use to make a city, right? So you just put a whole bunch of them together like this, and then you can just start placing your uh, buildings on top of this. So let's say that you're trying to make some kind of uh, city or a town on all these platforms. You can go in and just add in some buildings to that. So we can just look at some stuff. There's some big ones like uh, there's this thing right here. You can like put it down right here like this, have it be up against there. You can put a bunch of other buildings, stack a tower on top of this. Just be aware of layers when you do that, okay? Just be, be aware of what layer everything's on, okay? So let's say I wanna add like a tower on top of that platform, 
Okay, so that's just the general idea is that you can make these interesting platforms to make add a little bit more depth, more height to your stuff. So I hope that was useful. And I'll make sure to go through all the different use cases and highlights so that way people can go and look at it. So let's go ahead and do something a bit different. We've done platforms, we've done bridges. Let's try tall cliffs. What happens if you want to make a tall cliff, right? But you can't make a tall cliff, right? Let's go with fantasy. Let's do with fantasy regional HD again, okay? I kind of like working with the style. I know a lot of people feel it gets underrepresented because a lot of focus is on battle maps. So let's do another regional and then maybe we can move on to some other things, okay? Don't forget, if you have any questions, feel free to ask Cheryl. And if I miss anything, I hope Cheryl will catch them. I just wanna say thank you, welcome to everybody who just arrived, everyone who's new to the community. I'm glad that you're here. It's awesome to see you, fantastic. Okay, let's do tall cliffs. Now I know I showed this in a previous uh, a previous stream, but but I do want to highlight it again because it's pretty freaking cool. So I'm going to type in mesas, and this works with just about any any mountain, provided some uh, some things that you might have to do, like change some things. Now I'm not going to make anything complex. I'm just going to make a really simple one. I'm not going to do random. I'm just going to go ahead and take these two. Take this thing right here and just make a whole bunch like this. Just put a whole bunch together like this. So I'm gonna make what I'm gonna make is a large, think of like a large karst or a large plateau rock or mesa. Now it might look all odd at first, and that's okay. Right? So now you've created this nice, and you're gonna you might want to change things up just just so you know, after you've made the main thing, start adding in some rando ones on the sides like this to kind of break up the uh, break it up how it looks so that way it doesn't look all the same right so now once you've done that boom we go right back to clipping masks again right we go in we type in clipping masks like this you're gonna take a soft edge okay make sure it's a layer above it and we're gonna go ahead and make this clipping mask pretty big we're gonna make sure it fits on top like this okay now once you've done that we might want to mess with some things go to the transform tool and maybe increase this, and you're gonna to to take more than just one. You might wanna copy, paste, add another one here, copy, paste, bring it up here a little bit more. You don't want it to go over the edge, so you just don't want that. And then, <clears throat> now you have this open space here. Now you might get confused and say, well, this all looks the same here. That's okay. You can go in and put in more clipping masks on top, or you can just keep using these to kind of break that up. And just make sure it's a layer above the clipping mask like this and you can just put one right on this edge right here and it will kind of fit in with that color there you can put another one up like this if you want to kind of hide that one and you can put another one let's put a smaller one maybe oh this is a nice one right here this nice edge right here so there's another one right there okay so now you're slowly getting this kind of a little bit more platforms, a little bit more. And of course, again, you're gonna have to go in and you're gonna have to uh, put some stuff on here, okay? Let's just apply a texture real quick because it's this sticks out. So you're gonna have to find a texture that works with uh, the, that works with these. So we'll pick a couple of them and see how they look, okay? We'll go pick a couple. Make sure it's set to that FG layer. No, it doesn't seem to match that well. With it, we could uh, maybe boost the saturation a little bit and make sure the color kind of fits. I think about that looks good. Let's desaturate it just a hair and then let's throw it back on and just see how that looks. Oh yeah, much better. That looks much, much, much better. But of course, there's still a lot of this edges here. So you might wanna go back and go over that, but you get the general idea that you can create larger, more higher up elevation in your your fantasy regional maps by just putting a whole bunch of mountains or bases together putting some clipping masks on top of that now again this will be slightly time consuming of course so just keep that in mind depending on how much you want to make sure that these edges don't kind of show up so you're going to have to go around and just apply it it's going to take probably some smaller ones to put it together it's okay to have some repetition because it looks all right but there's some line work you're going to see here that just kind of looks weird so make sure you just kind of remove some of that line work and that way you have some kind of nice flushing nice flush up against this edge here so that's 
basically another way that you can do things, right? And what's really nice is you can paint this whatever you want, right? You want to paint a road at the top of this thing. You want to paint in maybe a lake, whatever you want. So that's the beauty of clipping masks is they're not just going to pick up one texture and you're just forced to work with it. You can add whatever the heck you want to it. So it's a super nice trick that you can do to make some pretty cool stuff. All right. Now there is another one in Fantasy Regional and I'll make this quick. I had mentioned hiding things, right? Now everyone knows that Fantasy Regional stamps have baked in shadows into them, right? Well, what happens if you don't want a ridiculous baked in shadow getting in your way, right? You don't want to deal with that. That's frustrating, right? Okay. So how do you do that? First, I would make sure that you would determine what layer your shadow is on. Is it on the BG layer, on the FG layer? So let's just go ahead and quick fill the whole screen with the add mode. Press enter. And now whatever texture is on the FG layer is going to match. Um, that is not supposed to be like that. I'm going to guess that's a bug. But we're going to go in with these hard edge clipping masks. And we're going to hide these shadows. Now this can be time consuming, it just depends, but this is extremely helpful if you want to get rid of these just really annoying shadows, okay? So you don't have to get rid of all of it, you just have to get rid of some of it, like this, and then just go ahead and put a couple clipping masks on top. Now the once you've done that, once you've hidden the shadow, you're going to want to absolutely make sure that you group, okay? And the other thing that you want to keep track of is it's part of a group and it's on a layer that's this same one. So if you're adding a stamp and you it's a layer behind it, those clipping masks are going to show up behind it. Okay? So you always got to keep in mind that when you hide shadows that they are on they're on a layer. So you have to make sure that you push up a layer for stamps to go over it, okay? But it still keeps the shadow hidden. So that's another kind of trick that you can use to kind of hide shadows because shadows can be such a pain in the rear especially when you're like well i want the sunlight to be over here not over there or the shadows are blending together creating this weird uh weird dark area because you pieced a bunch of walls together there's this weird shaded area that you don't want there right so clipping masks are basically designed to hide things that you don't want you don't want to deal with look ugly whatever okay not that incarnate can produce anything ugly <coughs> but uh yeah but that's the basic idea is you're, you're hiding stuff so there are a couple more things that we're going to do let's jump back right back into um the uh fantasy battle maps and let's just go through a couple use cases with them okay and and this applies also to any stamp that you have in the other styles okay because the top down styles have uh, some similar stamps like cauldrons, pots, pans, uh, those kind of things. So we're, what we're going to try to do is, let's say that you uh, want to <clears throat> show something inside of something like a barrel, a crate, or whatever. So let's just show that. Let me give an example. Let's say that you have like, for instance, a well, right? And you want to show something in the well, a different color, a different texture, but you can't, right? Because this is a stamp and you can't color over a stamp you could do a path tool that would be cool but you want to use a clipping mask right you want to portray that there's water down there maybe the well's not that deep right so let's go with clipping mask just like before we're going to use a soft edge instead of a hard edge and we want to make sure that clipping mask is above the stamp right okay and we're going to make it small enough to where there is some dark because what we want to show is that it's kind of dark along the edges of the walls but there's enough light going directly down where you can see a little bit below. So obviously if I want to show like water or slime or even lava or whatever I wanted to show, I can now paint that in. Now, since it's a well, it's probably going to be dark, a little bit dark down there. So you're not going to see the water very well. So let's use a darker water texture and just paint right on that FG layer. And you'll see there's a little bit of water in there, just like that, right? It's really just as simple as that, right? So it's not that complex. And of course, as always, make sure that you group, you group uh, whatever you're adding a clipping mask to so that that way you don't move just the well and forget the clipping mask, okay? So it's always important that you kind of do that. All right, perfect, there you go. 
So that's a well. What about other things? What about uh, like a cauldron with some goo in it or something like an evil stew that's cooking, right? You want to do that. Well, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's go back with clipping masks. Let's just use a hard edge this time. Let's use something different. Let's use a hard edge. And I'm just going to fill up the entire opening. Okay, just the entire opening. I think that looks about right. We can make it just a teeny bit smaller. I don't want to go over those edges too much. Okay, so now we have that. Let's go look for some green goo. It's a witch's brew, let's say. Let's say it's a witch's brew. Okay, let's do that. And we go in, we kind of look for like maybe this sewer texture right here might work good. Let's just apply it right here. It's kind of large. We might have to scale it down, of course, right? So let's go over here and size it down. Not too much, but just enough. And I'll apply it again. So now you have like this boiling, bubbling pot, cauldron, you know, and you can do that. So it's really, really, really fun to add these kind of things. And what's really cool is you can all add in other things. I'll just for fun, I'll just throw in something here real quick. I'm going to add in an ore. Oopsie, that is not how you spell or. And I'll show you some fun tricks. So let's say that we want to show that there is an or, or that this is a paddle and it's going underneath. We can go in and I'll show you some fun tricks, okay? So let's just go in like this. And I'm gonna go first, I'm going to, one second while I look this over, turn off that object shadow. And then I'm gonna go in and just use the path tool real quick and kind of show, I'm gonna put some dark shadows over this. I know this is not related to clipping masks, but just a fun little trick to show you real quick because I like doing that. Let me just check the width here, remove that shadow. I, I would do flattening techniques for this, but there's a cauldron right here. So that kind of gets in the way to do a flattening trick, but we're not gonna do that. Instead, I'm just gonna go ahead and cover the ore a little bit with dark to make it kind of look like it's underneath in the water and then we'll figure out how to move from there. We'll go like this. Make sure you cover up the whole ore. This is wherever this black wherever the black ends, that is where uh it's out of the cauldron, okay? And we might want to go through to blend modes and we maybe we can use these blend modes to kind of make it look like it's underwater underneath i think that works just fine so now you can kind of see that it looks like it's under inside the cauldron a little bit and you can change it around and do certain things add in other textures you can even put a uh, a clipping mask over that and bring the opacity down and then paint over that so there's some interesting tricks let me show you real quick let me look at this clipping mask real quick i'm going to put it above this one and i'm going to drop the opacity quite a bit Oh, it's not working. It looks like it doesn't. It can't let you do that. Opacity has a zero effect, unfortunately. Bummer. That's okay. Then I would do this instead. Just soft this edge like this, and then just put it in so make it look like it's going even further down. So that's the kind of stuff that you can do with the clipping mask. Super nice. And it's the same concept with all the things. Like there's pots and pans. You want to look like you're cooking an omelet or something. I think there's pots and pans. You'll see that there are pots and pans here that you can put stuff in. Let me just go ahead and just expand all of these so you can see them all. So you have these pots and pans right here. You can put stuff inside of all of that stuff and not just that, there's flower pots and whatever else that you want to, uh, if there's something else like a container or crate, whatever, that's all the different things that you can use uh, clipping masks for. Ridiculously helpful, by the way. Let's go ahead and do uh, another demo uh, with a more use cases. We're gonna, what we're planning on doing is we're gonna go and create a, uh, oh, wait, here it is right here. Perfect. This is from our editor Q&A. Excellent. I'm just going to reference this. Uh, let's say that you want to create some flooring uh, that has a huge section that collapsed, right? So we're going inside of a building and it's got a wooden floor. And let's say one of the wooden floors fell apart and broke, right? So what I did is I put together a series of clipping masks with the hard edge. You see how this is a clipping mask? It's been grouped, okay? And I've just stretched them to create these long ribbons to create these striations. And then what I did was I lined that up with the, I lined it up with the floorboard. So that's, you're taking the clipping masks 
and you're lining them up with the floorboard. It's pretty, pretty simple stuff. It's really not that complex. So you go like that. So all you want to do is just take a series of these clipping masks like this. So let me just copy and I'll just show you how I did it real quick. I'm just going to copy and paste, copy and paste. This one, I might want to change the settings. I might want to change the height. Okay. And you're going to piece them together just using the, use the, the pattern that's on the floor, on the floorboards to, to do it. And that's it really. It's just as simple as that. And just kind of piece a bunch of them together until you kind of get whatever design or whatever you wanted to create like this. Okay. Now, once you've done that, of course, group them. And then you can go in and you can just start painting, just start painting in whatever you want this to be. So if you wanted to have that dark wood texture underneath, then just go in, make sure, oopsie, my mistake. Let's set it into the FG layer, of course. And whatever it is, when you're showing height, I just want to let you know that if you're making a hole in the ground like this, it's going to be farther down. So a great way to show height difference is to make the floorboard or whatever ground texture smaller in scale to the first floor. You'll notice here that this is much smaller, okay? Uh, on top of that, you're going to want to also create uh, some shadowing. You'll notice here that there's shadows that I painted on here. And you notice that when you just painted it on here like this, it didn't look any good, right? It just looks like it's part of the floor. As always, paint in shadows, so painting in. So contrast is really the trick. Okay, so go ahead and just pick whatever size you, size and whatever opacity you want. And then you're going to go in and you're just going to take, make sure it's set to FG layer. And you're going to take your mouse or your pen and you're just going to go around the edge. So just make sure that those crosshairs of your mouse are just right there on that edge. And just go all the way around like this. Now the more black or shadowing you add, that means the more depth it's going to be. So you notice here that there's not much shadowing here. It's really not that deep, right? But if I go in with a second swipe, it's going to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to do the initial swipe first. This is just one pass. Then I'm going to go in and make it a little bit bigger. Not that big. That might be a little too big. And then just go right back in again and go over and let it overlap a little bit. Like this. It doesn't have to be super deep. Just whatever deep you want it to be. This isn't that deep and that's okay with me. I don't mind at all. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. Now remember, so the smaller the texture, the farther down it goes. Okay. So always factor that in and always remember to paint in your shadows because without it, it's going to look a little weird, right? So look here, see, without it, it looks, it looks weird. So you got to make sure that you paint in those shadows if you want it to, to look like there's a little bit of depth. And again, that's called uh, ambient occlusion. Okay. So that is that. So lots of use cases. I'm going to go with just one more use case and then probably call it good or ask a series of questions that people might have. And of course, uh, just so you know, if you want, you can put stuff down like we did here. We put some some bodies down here. Let's say that you wanted to put some crates or you wanted to show something underneath, like maybe some wood collapse. So let's just type in broken real quick. And let's just say that we wanted to show some wood that's broken underneath or something like that, right? So then you would go in like this, put it there, make sure it's set to the right. Uh, it's set to the same kind of darkness or brightness as this texture down there. So have it selected. Go to filters, drop that brightness down like that. And then all you have to do is just go in and flatten it to the FG layer. And then there it is. But also remember that this should be the BG layer. Your interior of your building should be the BG. Okay. Don't use the FG because when you go to flatten, it's going to be all, it's going to be showing up on the first floor and not just this bottom basement floor. Okay. So just rem keep that in mind when you're doing uh, these kind of floors and you want them to be painted separately, you don't want your interior to be the FG. If you're not going to do any clipping masks at all in your, in your plate, in your, um, in your interior, then don't worry about it. You can go ahead and just make your interior FG so that you can paint it separately from the exterior. Okay. All right. Let's just do one more, uh, example and then we'll, we'll call it good. We'll answer questions too. Okay. Let's go back into fantasy regional HD. And 
and we're going to go to 3K and let's go ahead and do some fun different stuff. I'm going to zoom in and now it's really popular for some people to make scenes. And what I'm going to do is kind of create a scene inside of a window on a stamp. So whether it's like a murder mystery or something like that. So sometimes you want to show that there's something happening in a window. And there's a lot of ways that you can go about that. You can use path tool, you can use clipping masks. But for this case, we're going to go with uh, clipping mask. I'm going to expand all and I want to make sure that I'm finding a building that has a window on it that's large enough to where I can kind of see or scale it up enough to where I can put a scene inside of it. So let's just quickly let these load. It's going to be a little bit of a slow load. You can do it with these gates right here. There's a lot of different ways to go about it. You could create, uh, you could even use the clipping mask to kind of create uh, a gate that's opening up to something. We can, I can, we'll do that in there too. Let's put that one down and then I'll go over to as well and find a building that kind of has a window that might be big enough to where I can put something in it. If not, then we'll switch back over to the other one. Let's just look around real quick. Some of them might not be big enough. So let's just open up and just see how it looks. One second. I'm going to take a look. Yeah, all these windows are just kind of small. So I don't know if that would kind of work. I might be able to do this window, put a clipping mask right here and then put a scene in there. But that seems like a lot of work. So let's just do this use case instead. Uh, if you want me to move forward with putting a window in a scene, I can. First, let's just do this one, okay? Real quick. Now for this to work, again, whatever this stamp is, you want it to be on the BG layer, not the FG layer, because you want the clipping masks to be separate from uh, the layer that the stamp is on, right? So that way you don't accidentally pick up whatever textures you're, you're, you're trying to put on the BG layer or FG layer that show up on the clipping mask. I don't think I explained that well, but I hope, <laughs> I hope that helps. So let's go in to look up clipping masks real quick. All right, so if I, oh, oopsie, what's going on? Oh, single, that's why. I don't know why that got clicked. Naughty, naughty. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create like a, like a portal that's gonna be uh, right here. So I'm gonna take a bunch of soft clipping masks and I'm gonna create this sense of a portal, right? Now, this is a kind of a hard one. There's no way to get the clipping mask behind. Like you could do it like this first, just put the clipping mask to where it's like this. And you can just go in and just paint whatever you want that way. So there's one way you can go ahead and now just paint whatever you want here. You could have originally done that just painting in here. Let's go in and just make it to where the portal is kind of cutting off some of the pill, the pill, <laughs> the, the, the pillar. <laughs> okay, let's do this real quick. Let's go ahead and add it in right here like this. I'm going to copy paste another one. Copy paste another one. Copy paste another one. Copy paste another one. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and just take these one and put it behind it all, like this. There we go. All right, let's line. Make sure it's lined up right. You can do it. There we go. Actually, let's just put in a couple just to make sure that it stays stays good. One sec. Copy paste. Copy paste. Just keep going. A couple more. There we go. And okay. So from there, you can go in and kind of paint in whatever it is you want to use uh, for like a portal, like some weird green goo, or you want to use like some maybe like this to make it kind of look like a hellscape. I mean, whatever it is that you, you want to do, it's up to you. I need to cut off the pills. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, buddy, you need to cut off on those, man. Stop cutting them pills. <laughs> oh, no, I know. Naughty. Naughty me. Naughty me. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so you got some clipping masks there. Oh, why is the blend mode multiply? Let's just go with... Oh, weird. I didn't even actually notice that. That's bizarre. And there's some weird shadow, too that's going around, I'm seeing right here too. That's bizarre, I'm not sure what that's about. Weird, naughty, naughty. All right, yeah, let's go in here real quick. Just cut off that last section right here. There we go, so that way it's kind of more flush. There we go, much better. So you have like a kind of a demonic door and you can do whatever you want. You can go, uh, 
like a Lovecraftian or whatever it is it's called, uh, Cthulhu, that kind of stuff. You can like throw in some tentacles coming out of here or some flames coming out. I mean, it's whatever the theme of the gate that you want, okay? Whatever the theme is, that's what's going to be coming out of the gate. Yeah, it's a, ooh, yeah, portal into the hot soup or portal into the hot sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, uh, this is, uh, um, some Tabasco. This is the red, the red Tabasco, and you just kind of like just dive right in it. And of course, it's going to burn your eyes a little bit when you jump in. So I recommend wearing goggles when you enter into this portal, especially those like really good goggles that woodshop workers wear. Make sure they're nice and big so they kind of cover everything. And as you jump into the portal, you have this nice, you know, these nice goggles to kind of protect your eyes from this really hot kind of sriracha gate because, you know, the sriracha gate is really the only way to go. And of course, as always, make sure that you group, okay? And that way you can, when you move it around. So that's pretty much a gate, kind of a gate idea. But there's so many different things that you can do with clipping masks. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Oh, who doesn't like sriracha? I like my mouth, I like my tongue on fire. I like it burning. I like the pain, give it to me. <laughs> Sriracha's delicious. The Tabasco portal. I love it. Welcome to the Tabasco portal. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's the best way to go about it. <laughs> Tabasco portal. <laughs> it's perfect. I, I love it. You know, I can't really see any buildings that I could use to kind of put a clipping mask on it. That's unfortunate. Walking into that is going to burn more than your tongue. <laughs> It burns! Ah! Lots of aloe vera. That's all I gotta say. You're gonna have to boost that aloe vera. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Is there any is there any other use cases that people here might have that we can do? I mean, you can behead people by hiding hiding the a corpse, like put the clapping clipping mask over the head, and then put another corpse on the ground, and then hide the body, and then that way you have the head and the body separately from each other. You know what? Just for the sake of posterity, it wouldn't be a Maddie stream with adding some kind of violence in it because I, you know, blood for the blood gods, right? So let's just do that, right? Why not? Let's do it. That is one spicy portal, folks. The spicy portal. I like it. Who doesn't like being transported to a spicy place, huh? I do. Who doesn't? Come on. Okay, let's go ahead and just do some corpse stuff. You know, make it fun, right? So let's go in, look up corpses. Actually, there's some way better ones in uh, the gothics horror. With the clipping mask. Why is it spicy? Because it's a hot portal. It's a sriracha portal. That's why it's spicy. <laughs> okay, there's some nicer corpses in here, I think. Uh, I mean, does that even make sense? There's some nicer corpses. Are there nicer corpses? Like, corpse is kind of bad, you know? Can you make that a good thing? Not really. Nah, no, nah, I don't think so. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's say that we want to show that this poor orc fellow, unfortunately. Hello, good day to you. Sorry that you're bleeding out. Not your day, obviously. But let's say that you wanted to show that their head got decapitated. You want to show that, right? So this is how you're going to do it, right? You're going to go and you're going to first put a clipping mask down. I use a soft one. That'll probably work just fine. Let's make the whole layer, the FG layer as well, by the way. Let's just do that real quick. Go in. So that way it's the same texture. Like it looks weird. There's a soft yellow... There's a soft bubble going on there, over the hovering on that guy's head. Why is that happening? Why? What? What is happening here? <laughs> One second, we're going to open up the catalog here, and we're going to go ahead and make sure to paint the FG layer all the same texture. doesn't matter what it is. We're just going to use this one. There we go. Okay. So we want to show that he was decapitated. Oh, demo destroying buildings or statues, turning them into ruins. And there isn't ruins broken version on the site. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. I just did breaking buildings too. I just did that. First, let's just finish this one. Let's just show that this head is being decapitated. And let's start with uh, some soft edge ones first. We'll put a couple together. Put a couple of them together. And we're going to try to hide as much 
of the head and some of the neck. Okay, so just put a place a couple clipping masks like over that. So much of the head is gone now. So hey, what's up, headless dude? Hello, my headless dude. How are you doing? Oh, the more examples is better. That's true. Yes, uh, so this is the result of coming through the other end of the Tabasco portal. You, I guess the goggles were loose, were useless. Save your eyes, lose your head, right? That doesn't, that's, what, what's the point of that? I know, I hate when that happens. I, I, I absolutely hate when you uh, come out one end of the portal with the head missing. That's not something that you want to do, right? Now, once you've done that, now you can go in and take that exact same stamp. This one right here, make sure it's set to the right size. You want, want the scale to be correct. So just go ahead and scale it up to the right scale. Now, instead of hiding the, instead of hiding the, uh, the head, we're going to hide the body, right? Hey, yeah, this is, it's a murder mystery. We're going to hide the bodies, folks. Hide the bodies. Hide them quickly. So we're just going to go place a whole bunch of clipping masks. We're going to hide all this stuff. Hide that, hide that. We're gonna hide the body. We're hiding the bodies. We're hiding the bodies. Okay, there we go. We've hidden much of it. Let's kind of hide the rest of that armor right there. Yikes, we wanna hide that. Yeekums, hide that. There we go. All right, so we've kind of hidden all that stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make sure that we select everything except for this one, and we're gonna group. And we want to put it a layer below this one because you don't want them clipping masks to be popping up like that. You want them to be below. So you put it below. Just keep going down until it goes below. And you can put the head just right over here if you want. Maybe it did a little bit of rolling. Who knows, right? You just The head just rolled over there. And then you want to take some blood. Blood. Because, you know, no one loses their head. I mean, unless you're, you've cauterized it with, like, catching your sword on fire, right? But if you're going to get your head chopped off, there's probably going to be a little blood, I'm going to say. So, hey. Now, I honestly feel like there's better blood options in, in a watercolor battle map style. Uh, because there's some drag, blood marks, there's some better ones that you can use. And they still work with fantasy battle maps. Because not all stamps work together, unfortunately. So let's go and use this under Dungeon, Blood, and you'll see there's some nice ones where it kind of, uh, where there should be some ones where there's like a drag like this. Looks just fine. First, let's do the initial hit. So where they had their head chopped off. Boom, there's the first one. And then their head may be rolled, dragged, whatever, like this going across. Let's just add another one. There we go. Much better. And we're going to put this down like this like that and then there you go there's your, your there's your missing person the oil well, missing head actually that's sorry I'm, maybe they're just getting ahead of the game i don't know oh uh, yeah okay no puns no puns dangerous don't do puns don't do puns but that is basically how you want to show a decapitation because i'm here to dement and and uh, rot your innocent minds by showing you corpses and bloods that's my job <laughs> that's my evil job I, I am here to corrupt the minds of the youth <laughs> i will bring about the apocalypse <laughs> ah being evil ah not, don't let anyone tell you it's bad it, it's great <laughs> so there's your blood everybody and you satisfied now the blood <laughs> the blood gods have been satisfied and what's cool is you can kind of move it anywhere you want you want it to be like this kind of rotate it around <laughs> We're going to move it to the side here. I'm just going to leave it there because I want everyone to just bask and enjoy the headless body over here on the side. <laughs> okay, so what was the... Someone said there was a couple other use cases that they wanted to do. Just don't, don't, mind, the, uh, don't mind the corpse there. Don't mind that. Just ignore that. Uh, it's just there to kind of lighten up the scene, make you feel comfortable. You know, that's what it's there for. Just bask in that. Enjoy it. Uh, specifically to help me process is better. Of course the process is better. Absolutely, I agree with you. All right, so uh, breaking buildings. Yeah, there are some stamps that don't. Uh, there are some stamps that don't have uh, broken components to it. And we talked about it in the breaking stamp stream that took place uh, on Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday. Uh, the, oh, no, that was Throne Room. Sorry, uh, the 20, it was 
I think Monday. My my apologies. So uh, there are some composite stamps. This is the only time I would recommend using clipping masks to kind of breaking buildings uh, with, with the composites because the composites uh, they don't uh, you, you to flatten to show that they break. You have to flatten the whole thing. Disco decapitation. Okay, I'm never gonna say that again. Let's just not do that. I think we can find small composite buildings. Let me just type it in. Oh, there we are, simple one. So here's a small one. Okay, one second while I scale this down and watch that endless wheel just turning and turning. It's hypnotizing me. Come on. There we go. Oh, the evil spinning has ended. Mind control. You bastards! What is this? Is this is this, is this this a mind flare? What's happening here? All right. So now <clears throat> when you're breaking buildings, normally you can just use broken walls and stamps. And that's because you put together your own building. But now when you're working with clipping masks or when you're working with composites, sorry, going to stop cutting those pills, man. Uh, when you're working with a composite building like this, obviously you can't uh, show very well that it's broken, right? Without just flattening it to the layer. Now, if you don't want to flatten it to a layer uh, and instead you want to keep it live and editable, then you would obviously use a clipping mask, right? You would use a clipping mask, especially these hard ones. Uh, they're going to work good, but you don't have to use hard edge. You can use soft edge as well. Let's just type in clip in mask real quick if I know how to spell it. Correctly spelling, I uh, dunce cap for Maddie. Sit in that corner, boy. You don't know how to spell, you dunce. So you want to basically show that there's some breaking going on uh, on a composite building. And so you're going to use a composite kind of stamp to do that, right? Now, this is going to be a multi-layer task. This is going to be, this might even be more time consuming than just piecing one by hand using uh, other stamps. So this might be time consuming. I'm just going to do one side of a wall if you want to show that it, it collapsed or broke, okay? So we want to go ahead and do that. So let's actually use a soft one, actually. I'm going to change that. I was wrong. I didn't change my mind. I'm going to use a soft one instead. I'm going to put it on top like this. And from here, you want to show that there's some kind of collapse. So the clipping mask is on layer one. The composite is on layer zero. So clearly, you're going to want to put any kind of broken walls, whatever you want, a layer above that. So layer two or three is just fine. Now, once you've done that, you're obviously going to want to find the same walls that are on the composite. So it's going to broken. And I do believe it's a concrete wall. Let's go up to the top here and take a look. I'm pretty sure it's here. That's crypt. Ah, there it is right there. I think this is the same stone. Let's just verify real quick. Come on now, are we gonna work? There we go. Yeah, I think it is. So you see right here, there is this the same stone, same, it was put together with the same one. So you'll have to obviously need to, <laughs> you're obviously gonna have to take uh, that same one and then just break it. So you want, let's say, you wanna put one right here like this to make it look like it collapsed a little bit. You wanna put in another one that's broken. You can take, even use just a whole one, put it all the way across to show that it's broken. So let's take this one like this and you can just put it right here like that or put it down like this. It's up to you how, which way you wanna go about it. So you wanna piece some things together to show that it's broken. You want it to be completely collapsed out. Like maybe something fell through. There are some ones that show like a break like this. So it looks like it collapsed. And of course you wanna take those clipping masks and you're gonna to wanna to probably try to hide these other pieces right here. And again, make sure it's a layer below. So just go ahead and do that. That way you can kind of hide. You can hide that so it's not there. And of course, since there is some wood there, you're probably gonna want to also try to find maybe a broken wood piece as well to put on there. If you want to, just take a look and see if they have them available. Broken wooden rubble. Yeah, this might work. You can use maybe like this one and you might have to make it bigger, maybe find a longer one like this, or two of them if you want. You can take two of them like this and then put one right here and make sure again that it's a layer above it. One second, boop, boop. Oopsie, it's not selected, poo, pooey. There we go. So you have that 
So it looks like it maybe it like it chipped or broke off, and then you can put another one over here. Like, whoa, what is going on here? Weird. Oh whoa. Oh, that's super weird. I just encountered a bug. Whenever I move, move the mouse. <laughs> it goes to oh right. now remember what to do when you have a bug, right? Whenever you see a bug, don't forget to go right over to your uh uh where is it? Sorry, help chat. You click this right here, help chat with support, this thing's gonna pop up. Just make sure that you just click send a message and then we'll review it, okay? Now, when you first bump into a bug, by the way, don't message us right away. Just save and refresh the page and because it might just be old data, okay? If the problem persists, again, then you can go ahead and send us a report. Uh, it always helps if you send us a clone of the map that has a problem. So don't send us like the link to the original map because I don't, we don't want to screw up your map. We don't want to do anything to it. So make a clone of the problematic map send us the clone link you don't have to make it public by the way just open the map up open the clone up then copy and paste the address bar that's at the top and then add that into your uh your customer support ticket okay and that way we can just go right over that problematic map run some tests and get that fixed for you we have great customer service generally we try to help people as quickly as possible so don't be afraid to ask questions I would recommend though that more in-depth questions like how do I use this tool one that might take some more time to answer uh, please use those kind of questions for our discord community ask mentors stuff like that uh, of course don't ask mentors about um, uh, account information just do a support ticket for that so just know all of that information and if you want to know how to get rid of the uh, this thing just click that button right there and it will go away sometimes people are like why won't this stupid support window go away I want to punch it in the face you just got to click that little button right there and that will make that work okay RZ Corvide I'm thinking about combining these techniques to make a city and then take big chunks out of the buildings like it's been under siege hey great idea absolutely Right, yeah, the clipping masks are great, a great, great, great. I try to say grape and great at the same time. Great. <laughs> Whoa. This is what happens when you talk too fast. You just blend words together. <laughs> By the way, happy April Fools, everybody. <laughs> happy April Fools to you all. Well, anyway, so back to the thing. So you can break walls. This isn't, there's a little bit more work to than that. Probably should have used the hard edge like I originally suggested for hiding this stuff. So that's basically how you would break a composite of a building. Okay, that's my suggestion for composites. Uh, you don't have to do this, use clipping mask if you're just using your own, again, your own put together custom building. So that that way, all you have to do is just delete a wall and then replace it with a broken part of the wall. Totally recommend that you go check out how to break building stream that happened on Monday. Go go check that out. In fact, when I add that to YouTube, I'll make sure to put that in uh, one of the cards so that people can see that because don't miss out on that. It's a whole stream on how to break stuff. Demolish, wrecking ball, wreck it Ralph. Okay, that's what we got going on here, all right? So definitely go check that out. Super fun, okay. <laughs> Happy clowning, Mati. <laughs> you guys know how nefarious I am, so it is trouble. You know I can get in trouble on April Fool's. It's dangerous, what can I say? Now, is there any questions that people have? This has actually been a really short stream, only an hour. I think that showed uh, the majority of the use cases. I'm sure there are a ton more, of course. There is always more, 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 more. But I just wanted to give you a general idea of these are the basic ones. Again, you see the continuity of its use, and that is to hide stuff, right? You want to hide that mistake. You want to hide a head. You want to hide uh uh magical unicorn's foot i don't care whatever it is that you you want to do that is what they're for okay that's the suggestion all right so i'll let people try to figure out any questions that they might have and make sure that those questions are particularly uh to clipping masks if you have any other questions you just can go ahead and ask cheryl but uh, I, let's just, I'll quickly just mention that you should absolutely join our Discord server. We have the best community, and I can say that with absolute certainty, because we, 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 we don't allow anyone to be a total butthead 
in our in our community. We make sure that everyone is polite and kind because that's what rules are for, right? The rules are to make it safe, to make you feel comfortable, and that you can ask for advice without being like, your river sucks so much, just so, so much. I hate it, right? No, no, no. We got people who will give you constructive criticism and help you to, to unnoob you, shall we say. I had to be unnoobed. Now it's other noobs' turns. We're here to unnoob and to help you to become better at the tool. That's that's the goal here, okay? So please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We'll go over those. If not, we can wrap it up. I can tell you uh, a little bit about future streams. I know this is, was the the first, uh, the last stream of the week, but also the first stream of the month. Fun stuff. How? Oh, ooh, Mati, what uh, what rubble would you use to make a hole in a slate roof? Ooh, you know there are individual there are individual tiles. Do you mean like the tiles? Uh, I think there are individual tiles, but only for a specific style. Let me just check real quick, and I'll show you. One moment. Oh yeah, I'll show you how to do with Clippy Math. One second. First, let me find the style. Gothic horror. That's actually a pretty cool question. Yeah, okay. let me see. Is there individual tile? Let me just type it in real quick. There should be some kind of roof tiling. Real quick, I want to make sure that it's there. Uh, I'm not seeing individual roof tiles. That's unfortunate. Oh, that's right. It's on just Gothic. I might be able to find it if I select the whole thing. So just one second here. One moment, bear with me. I'm just kind of trying to find a particular stamp. I believe it was individual roof tiles, which could be extremely useful if you're trying to show that. Uh, I don't see it in here. I know it's here somewhere. I just can't find it. I forgot what it was titled. It should be called a roof tile, really. That way it's easy to find. Uh, it's for the clay roof style. Okay, let's just first just pick a, uh, a building and then let's just make sure. Right here, let's just pick a building. Give it a sec to load. Things are a little slow. Now you're talking about this thing in particular, right? You want to show a hole in this building. Let's just verify that that's correct. Eh, yeah, not technically, we, it's not, it's not, it's against our terms of service to export stamps and then to edit them in another tool and then to export them elsewhere. Uh, but, you know, uh, we do take requests. If there's anything that you mention that you want added, just ask us. We have an entire channel dedicated to that. Um, so just be sure to be aware of the terms of service. Again, technically, it's against our terms of service to rip art out of the catalog, out of the tool, put it into another tool edit it and then either try to sell it or put it into another tool that's not incarnate. There are some exceptions if you want to do some minor editing and then put it back into the tool where we're a little less lenient, we're a little more lenient about that because we know that you're not adding it to other uh, programs. But for the most part, we would suggest not doing that. And if you, anything that you want, there's no reason why you should have to take it into Photoshop and edit it. Just ask us, we'll do it for you. Don't worry. We have a suggestion channel. We have a request channel for art just say look we would like to have roofs be this and the more upvotes it gets the more visibility it gets the more chances it'll be done there's no guarantees of course uh but we generally follow a, a thumbs up rule most thumb thumbs up is something we're considering to add to the tool so don't be shy make suggestions everyone else does the channel is huge uh if you don't know if a question has already been asked feel free to ask a moderator or just go into the search function in the side and just look up or uh, a couple keywords or a keyword of the question that you have to verify that's already been asked because it doesn't do any good to ask a question if you know that if, 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 do a request if it's already been requested because then you're taking away possible votes from another one or we'll just accumulate them but feel free I know there's a lot you can always ask a mentor uh, Cheryl is a great person to ask Cheryl is able to find a uh, requests really quickly in channels, so just ping, ping them, okay? Uh, yeah, I'm, well, I'm sure you'd like to do edits yourself, but just be careful. Remember, it is against the terms of service to kind of do stuff like that. So just kind of keep that in mind. I do appreciate the enthusiasm and your desire to want to make things, but the best thing to do is really just to ask our team. We'll do it, okay? But I do really like that enthusiasm. That's fantastic, okay? Let's quickly just do this. I think this is the proper one. I'm gonna make it nice and big. And really the concept remains the same uh, as if you were making a, uh, a hole in a floor, right? It's that exact same concept. You're gonna to want to use, of course, hard edge. 
your hard edges, right? And just like before, you're gonna to wanna to go in and you wanna piece a bunch of them. And now if you don't know what shape to make of a wall, if you don't know what shape to make, it's not complex. What you do is just use the line work of the tile work, right? So you have some tiles here. All you wanna do is just follow that tile work. So first, let's just go in and make some changes to this by going to the advanced settings, going to transform and changing that width and height. And I'm gonna make it around the same size as most of the tiles, okay? Then you're just gonna copy and paste and just put a bunch together like this and make sure that they're connected. They're connected pretty good, all right? And if you don't want to do this individual tiles, you can just make a much larger one, but make sure that the edges have individual tiles so that it looks like the tiles broke, okay? So that's really an important thing is to follow the line work of pre-existing of the, of the roof so that that way roof so that that way uh, it looks a little bit more natural when you're doing it okay so we're adding some pieces i'm not going to make a giant one but i'll make one that's fairly big enough to where you can see inside and it's that again the concept remains relatively the same as um relatively the same as doing the the floorboard one okay let's just quickly add in a couple more i just want to add in enough to where it looks like there's a significant kind of break here. Okay, and we'll add in just a couple more. This is not quite big enough. I wanna make one just a little bit bigger. Okay, let's just put a couple of these together, copy, paste. All right, I think that's just enough to where you can kind of see uh, a little bit, right? So there's that, right? So now that you've done that, you're going to want to figure out what is going to be below. So this is assume this is a one floor building. It doesn't have a second floor whatsoever. Okay. It doesn't have a second floor. So you don't have to worry about that. Right. So, but you do want to figure out if it's only one floor, you have to figure out what, what texture that floor is, how dark is it inside of the building? And then what you want to have showing. Okay. So now let's say that you uh, want to use a stone texture to represent the floor, just like we did. We used a wooden one. Let's go with a stone floor in the interior. If it's a single floor, the ground floor is generally made of like a stone. If it's a kind of a person of uh, nobility, at least will have some stone. The second floor is not generally made of stone of a regular house. It's usually made of wood, okay? Normally, it's made of wood. If it's a castle, different floors can be made of stone, a mix of stone, daub, wooden beams, uh, stuffed with hay, uh, all that kind of stuff. So it just depends. But for your, um, for this particular one, we're just going to use a stone floor, and I'm going to want to size it down, obviously, a little bit to where it looks like it's a little bit further down on the ground. So let's go into our advanced settings, size. Let's look at the size. That looks okay. Let's also drop the brightness down. Okay, let's just say there's minimal lighting inside. So let's drop the texture down and let's just do one swipe. Just kind of cover it. So you see the stone ground underneath, right? But we came across that same problem, right? Where it doesn't look like there's some depth there because there's no shadowing, right? So we got to go right back to the color black or, 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 you can just take that exact same texture again and drop the brightness down even more. Okay, that way you're not really drowning out too much of the texture and make sure that softness is all the way up. Drop the opacity and we're gonna do that real quick. Once again, you're gonna do a quick line around here like this to kind of create this and now if you want more like you want some rubble you want some splintered sections we can do that we can we can actually do that so we'll get into if you want to show a little bit more rubble around the edges that is doable okay so we'll get into that in just a moment first let's make sure that we absolutely do this if you as you can tell it's just the exact same thing we did with that interior showing the floor okay not really that complex let's just do it again one more pass over like this and just don't forget that the more uh shadow that you add the deeper it's going to be and if right now if you want to show that uh if you want to show that 
the sun is not going straight down, you can just go in and just copy that same kind of design you did before. And it looks like the, sh the sun now is different. It's projecting at a different angle. It's not straight up and down because it's showing the shadow of the tiling. Now, the way that that works is you have to understand where the shadow, where the light is, right? So if the shadow of the roof is like this far out, then that means that clearly the light source is going to be going down kind of like this. One second, I'll put that together. Make sure it's set on the right layer. The light source is coming this way, okay? And it's coming down at an angle kind of like this, all right? And by doing that, it's setting off this uh, projected shadow like this. Now, if the, sh the light was just straight down like noon, then you would just keep the shadows along the edge like this. But if you want to show a different time of the day, move the shadow of the roofing with just a little bit of texturing, just like that, okay? That's really as simple as it is. It's super easy to do. It's not complex, okay? That's a nice little, little hole in the roof. And you can make it huge. You can make this thing massive if you want. You could show half the building as dilapidated. You could show this entire section right here as missing. It's absolutely possible. Let me just take all these clipping masks real quick. I'm going to go ahead and group them and I'll show you what that what might look like. You can just take a whole bunch of these like this and you want to just piece a bunch of them together. So just copy and paste, put another one like this. Copy, paste, put another one in like this. If you want to start showing in a much larger kind of destruction. And of course, it's going to take a little bit of work. It might not look good at first like this. So you're going to have to do some changes to things, move things around. But that is basically how you would make it look bigger by just copying and pasting or adding it in whatever you want. And that's that. Okay. Now, if you want to show other things, like you wanted to show, like maybe there's some tiles on the ground that, that broke off or something, I think there are little tiles that you can put down there. You can paint them in. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to see if I can find little tiles. Did anyone find out where there was a roof tile? Is it called a roof tile? A clay tile? Maybe it's clay. Let me look it up real quick. Clay. Ah, okay. So these tiles right here. Now, I know that these tiles are a bit different from this one. So uh, we, we should really add uh, a similar roof, roof tile. But for now, we're just going to make it to where this roof tile kind of matches this roof tile. So all we have to do is really just go over to filters, change the hue to where it kind of matches it, drop the saturation a bit, and we can drop the brightness down because it's going to be farther down. And now the tiles fell down, right? The tiles fell down, okay? So now if the tiles fell down, they're going to be a bit smaller, right? So let's just place a bunch of them. Uh, on the ground, some in the shadow, some not, some over here, some right here. We'll just we'll just show a bunch. Now, right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna flatten them. So don't worry if you're like, wait a minute, they're covered. <laughs> don't you worry, I got you back. Don't worry, I got you, I got you. Okay, put a couple tiles on the ground there to show that it's fallen down. And if you want, you can even put a couple tiles on the roof if you want. Maybe some of them hit and they landed on there. And if the color still doesn't work, the color scheme just doesn't work for you, don't forget, you can go select the ones that are on the roof and just go right over to uh, the blend mode luminosity. And it's going to pick up whatever color the, the roof is, right? And now the next part is to go in and select all these tiles. Now, normally you should put the tiles in first. That way you can paint them. So we'll have to go back and do that. So let's group and then, of course, flatten to what? Ah, uh, the FG layer. Right. So I flattened the FG layer. There it is. Now, of course, we're going to want to paint in some of that stuff. And you're going to have to use not uh, the tile texture. You're going to have to use color. This is why you don't want to do your painting, your textures in first. Put everything you want on that layer first, then flatten it. But since I made that mistake, now I have to go in and kind of have to paint it. So I'll go in real quick and just paint whatever is in the shadows and leave the rest in the color like this. So this is going to be painted in. This is going to be painted in. Okay. And now you have a little bit more natural looking uh, lighting for the tiles that fell down in there, okay? And you're gonna apply that. So just remember, next time, don't do don't do what I just did and put in the tiles after the shadowing. Put the tiles in 
first. Flatten them and then paint in your texture. Paint in your shadowing, okay? And it's going to be the same thing for however big that opening is going to be, however big the collapse or whatever is going to be, okay? So just kind of factor that in mind. And what's really going to help to show, by the way, a collapse is lots of rubble. So be sure that you do actually add a lot of stuff, uh, you know, add a little bit of chunks, maybe a little bit of debris, uh, throw in maybe some dirt or something because there's a lot of dirt on a, on a roof, all this kind of stuff. So... One thing you could do is take like this orc dry grass texture, which I am extremely fond of, extremely fond of this, and I'm going to drop the size down, and I might even want to consider changing the color to be that reddish color that you that we see right here. So I'm going to go in and let's say about that color looks good. We're also going to drop the brightness of it because it's a little farther down. And I don't know if that's really the right color. Let's just double check real here. I'll, you know, I think that looks a little bit better. Now we're gonna drop the opacity down quite a bit. And you're just gonna go ahead and just paint in some of, well, let's go up actually, it's not enough. Let's go up to 54, okay. Is it not working on the FG layer? What's happening here? Mm -hmm. Huh, that's weird, it's not even showing up. That's bizarre. Let me go with 50%, hmm. This looks like a bug, and you know what that means. Oh, oh I see. It's loading images. Okay. <laughs> Let's save and then refresh. Let's go destroy some buildings. Destroy, destroy, demolition. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna. It looks like uh, I've reached an internet timeout. It looks like it's trying to load a bunch of stuff, so there's a connectivity issue. All you got to do is just save and then just refresh the page. It's really just as simple as that. Saving might be a little slow. I see that there is some lag going on there. It might be because I am editing in 3K. So instead, we're just going to refresh the page, and I'm going to worry about it. But you get the general idea. Uh, what I was trying to do there was basically just add in uh, a little bit of debris at the bottom. Oh, it's so bright. It's blinding my face. Ow! <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that helped. That gave you guys a general idea. Uh, folks, on how it kind of works, clipping masks are incredibly useful. I can tell you, uh, I, I could really show you 50 different use cases, but hey, we've been going on for an hour and a half. I think I've showed you the majority of them. You get the general idea of what they're for and kind of how they operate. I'll just quickly review that for those of you who maybe just walked in. A clipping mask is basically designed for hiding. Because it's a stamp, it can go in between layer negative five and positive five. That's 11 layers to work with, unlike the actual FG layer in which you're just stuck on one layer, the FG layer. But clipping mask allows you to hide stamps on any layer. Uh, negative, positive five might be kind of hard. There is uh, an ordering issue there sometimes. So you might have to drop a stamp to layer four and then put the clipping mask on five okay but that's generally the idea of clipping masks they're meant to hide things uh and that's really about it you want to uh, again show a, a roof collapsed wall collapse on a composite building filling in a pot and pans hiding shadows creating large platforms and bridges all these various things okay all these things are ridiculously helpful let's quickly just discuss the stream that's coming up next uh, the next stream that's coming up is going to be Monday the 4th. And guess what? We're going to be showing you how to create points of interest in the fantasy world style. And the fa and if you don't know what uh, that looks like, uh, I'll be sure to show you guys an example of that at the beginning of the stream and with uh, the update for the or the uh, notification for that. But basically a point of interest is like a village a monument, a town, a temple, a uh, capital, a uh, world tree. It's a point of interest on your map, right? And so it's because it's world maps, I'm going to be showing you how to put together uh, a series of stamps to make like a put together a, a group of stamps to make a unique and interesting point of interest. Okay, so that is what we're going to be doing on Monday. And I'm super excited about that. I'm sure you've noticed in the schedule that we've added in four new streams. There's going to be two on Thursdays and two on uh, Fridays. So four new streams. That's super exciting. I can't wait for that. The following two streams will be how to create floating islands, or, which I'm excited for that one, and how to create city blocks with the water watercolor city style. 
super awesome. I'm super excited for all these. I can't wait to do this with you guys. I think that's it. There's no more questions. So I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for making it. Merry mat making. And please stay safe and healthy. Okay, everybody? <laughs> Thanks again, everyone. I'll see you guys next time.